Hi there, hiya. This is your work for week beginning the 1st of February uh, 2021, January 2020, or February 2021. Um, this week we're going to be working on or building on some of the work that we did uh, in the last two weeks. Um, we looked originally a couple of weeks ago at the Bohr model of the atom and energy levels. We're going to take that and build on that a little bit. And we also did irradiance last week. So again, talking about light, talking about these energy level transitions and talking about how um, they all tie up together. So the first thing I want to do is have a little recap of what we learned a couple of weeks ago, just regarding energy levels. And that's this first bit at the top here. So electrons can have different orbits depending on their energy. Electrons start at ground state, so ground state down here, and they absorb energy, rise up to a higher energy level. So they absorb, now that's quite a key word, they absorb energy and they go from the ground state to a higher energy level. They don't stay at that energy level and they drop back down to ground state and as they do that, they release EM waves. So we did that a couple of weeks ago, we've done some questions on that. So what we're gonna want now and say, well, every element has a different number of energy levels with each level having its own required energy value. So I've given some numbers to these down the side. So ground state is given a number and the energy levels above that have given the number. Now, a key thing here is that these numbers are negative and the ionization level has a zero energy. Now, we'll explain that next time, next week, when we do um, photoelectric effect and photoelectric emission. And it's, and it's a good explanation to understand why um, zero joules is for the ionization. But for now, I just want you to accept that it's negative numbers that we've given and the top one being zero. But we'll go into that in more detail later on. So electrons only absorb the exact amount of energy to excite them from ground state specific level. So if electron was going from here to here, it would only absorb the energy from the 50 to the 20, meaning 30 joules of energy to go between 50 and 20. I've got a little animation in a minute that will show you um, how these uh, energy levels work. As the electrons drop back down to ground state, they may stop at lower energy levels on their way. And each energy level transition will release its own EM wave corresponding to the energy difference between the upper and lower, lower, not lower, the lower level. That should be lower level. I'll change that because it's not a lower level, it's a lower level. The example element in the diagram has six possible energy level transitions resulting in six electromagnetic waves produced each with different energy values. So I'm going to click through and show you. So one at a time. So um, I'm just get it off. So the first one, um, if it was going from this energy level down to this energy level, it has going from minus 10 to minus 50 joules. So that would release energy of 40 joules, because that's the difference between the minus 10 and the minus 50, is 40 joules of energy. So an EM wave would come off with what would be 40 joules of energy. These numbers are massive. It would never be as big as this. Um, but just to give you an idea of the numbers. This one would go from 0 to minus 50, so 50 joules of energy. This one would be from uh, 10 to 20, it would be 10 joules of energy. This one would be from zero to 20. So now, this is what I'm saying before. It, when it goes from ground state, it can jump up to this one, or it can jump up to this one, or this one. Let's say it jumped up to this one, then it can drop down to this one, and then stop for a bit, and then drop to this one, stop for a bit, and then drop to this one. Or it could just drop straight from the top all the way to the bottom. So this one, if it was going from here to here, would give you 20 joules. And this one here would go from there to there, would be 10 joules. And the last one would be from here to here. Now, you'll see there, there's one, two, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six possible energy level transitions that an electron can make, energy transition, downward transitions electron can make as um, it's inside this uh, element. Now, what I've done here for you is trying to give you an idea of what types of EM wave. And let's assume that every EM wave produced here was in the visible spectrum, was, uh, was visible light. The larger the energy level transition, the greater the energy, the greater the energy, the higher the frequency, we're going to talk about that in a minute, and the higher the frequency, the lower the wavelength. So the shorter the wavelength. So this, these colours actually correspond to what it might be like in an atom. The smaller energy jumps give out the waves near the red end of the spectrum, and the larger energy jumps give out the waves near the violet or blue end of the spectrum. 
I'm going to go into that in more detail just now. Feel free to load up the PowerPoint separately from your assignment and you can click through these um, transitions yourself and just see how they work, maybe one at a time, just try and get your head around it. So the next slide talks about um, something called Planck's constant. Now through experiments it was found that each one of these energy level transitions was um, the value of that energy was a multiple of the same number, very, very small number. And that number was is known as Planck's constant. It was found by Max Planck, a famous physicist, and it's given the symbol H. This phenomenon is referred to as quantization. So you'll hear quantization come up now and again, and we talk about it a lot more at advanced higher, but quantization means a bundle or a packet. So what we're saying here is that the energy of these photons, uh, or so the energy of these transitions is a multiple of Planck's constant. It's a packet of Planck's constant. So let's say that the energy was five times Planck constant. So there's five packets of these Planck's constant. So Planck's constant is what's known as a quantum part, a quantum number, or um, the whole idea that it's a multiple is known as quantization. So the energy release by an energy level transition is referred to as being quantized because it's a packet or a bundle of Planck's constant, okay? And Planck's constant is 6.63 times 10 to the 34 joule seconds. You're given that in a data sheet. You don't need to remember it. Right, how are we going to use this Planck's constant? How we're going to use it is to work out the energy of a photon and the energy or that's released through that energy level transition. So the small bundles or quanta of electromagnetic energy released by energy level transitions are referred to as quantum particles called photons. So this little packet of energy released when an electron jumps from a higher to lower energy level or drops from a higher to lower energy level, that little packet of energy that's released is referred to as a photon. And that photon is known as a particle. It behaves a bit like a particle. And we'll go into that in more detail later on. So the energy of a photon is directly proportional to the frequency of the EM radiation produced. So this is the top part here. So the photon energy is directly proportional to frequency. So as photon energy goes up, then frequency goes up. E is proportional to F. If read as a formula, it becomes E equals F times a constant. And that constant is Planck's constant. So we get this very important formula, E equals HF, to work out the energy of the photon. Now, each energy level transition produces a unique photon with unique energy and frequency. And the energy produced by an energy level transition and the released photon can be calculated by the difference between the energy level values. So the energy level transition, so from a higher number to a lower number, or from the higher level to a lower level, remember they're negatives, the air equals the energy of the photon. So this delta E, this change in energy, is equal to the higher to the lower energy level is equal to HF. And this here is the subtraction. So E2 is the higher one, minus E1, which is the lower one, equals the energy of the photon. Now these two numbers are both negative. So you have a negative minus a negative, which gives you a positive. And because that number there is always going to be higher than that number there. So this number here, uh, this one here will always give you a positive value. And that's the value of the energy of the photon. So let's look at a pass paper question for that. So here I pulled out a pass paper question. This is from pass paper 2019. It says a laser emits light when electrons are stimulated to fall from a high energy level to a lower energy level. The, we don't need to understand a bit about lasers and, and the stimulation. That's not relevant. It's the fact that they are dropping from higher to lower energy levels. The diagram shows some of the energy levels involved. So what tends to happen is they number the energy levels, uh, E0 to E5. They just number them up the way. And the energy level transition, we're saying is from here to here. So it's from E5 to E3, E5 to E3. It's important that we call it E5 to E3. So E5 to E3, you're given the values of these, minus 2.976 times 10 to negative 18, and minus 3.290 times 10 to negative 18, determine the wavelength of the photon emitted. We've not talked about wavelength yet. We have talked about frequency. So the first thing we can do is you write down your formula. You'll get that in the formula sheet. E2 minus E1 is, equals HF. 
You plug in your values for E2 and E1, which are here. Make notes they're both negatives with a negative sign in between them. Equals HF. Here is your H, Planck's constant. Get that from the data sheet. And there is your frequency. You rearrange for F, and you get F is equal to 4.73604288. 8265 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Now you don't, you're only getting, it's a four mark question, you're getting one mark for doing the work in here, you're not getting a mark for the frequency itself. You then take very familiar formula, V equals F lambda. Now we know that all light travels at the same speed, 3 times 10 to the power 8. We put that frequency in, we rearrange for lambda, just here, and we get lambda at 6.33 times 10 to negative 7 meters. That's a four mark question. You get your three standard marks for working out your um, that you would do normally for working out frequency, and then you would get your extra marks. But here you've got actually get your extra marks for um, using vehicles F lambda. So you could be asked to work out the wavelength and the, the frequency of the photon, and you would stop here and round it appropriately, or you could be go on to get more marks for the wavelength. Four marker for this one using E2 minus E1 equals HF and V equals F lambda. Now. You could put these two formulas together. You could say E2 minus E1 equals HV over lambda, uh, or HV divided by lambda if you wanted to, and that's just putting these two formulas together and you would still get your four marks for that, assuming the answer was correct. The homework for uh, this, which will go out next week, will have more of this style pass through question in it. Okay. We're now going to move on and think about uh, this photon that comes out. The photon is a little packet of light, packet of, or not just light, could be any EM wave. And we're going to be a bit of revision about spectra and introduce a new type of spectra to you. You may have done it before, depending on who your teacher was last year. So a spectrum, which is, uh, which could be the plural, the plural spectra. So you have a spectrum, and if you have many spectrums, you have spectra. Is a diagram of what is observed when light is separated into its colours using either refraction or diffraction. We'll go into that in a few weeks and how exactly we do that. We should have seen that in National 5 a little bit. A uh, continuous spectrum contains all the colours and comes from a continuous white light source. So here is your continuous spectrum here, all the colours from the blue-violet end up to the red end here. A line emission spectra contains coloured lines on a black background. Each element has its own unique line emission spectrum, like a, like a, um, a, a light fingerprint. So here would be a continuous spectrum, all the colours, and a line emission spectrum would be this one here. This is the line emission spectrum for hydrogen, and they have a black background with coloured lines corresponding to different parts. This is what you've learned from National 5. This end of the spectrum is blue-violet light, it has short wavelength, high frequency, and you also know, because of E equals HF, it is high energy. This end of the spectrum, red end, long wavelength, low frequency, low energy. Now, I've said this to my class a few times, but the way I remember which end is which and which wavelength is which, I always think about a Bunsen burner. Now, your Bunsen burner, you get different coloured flames. You have a yellow flame and you have a blue flame. We all know the blue flame is hotter, so the blue flame has more energy. So, the blue flame is down near this end. It has more energy. More energy equals HF, more frequency, more frequency, because V equals F lambda, less wavelength. The yellow flame is towards the red end and has less energy. So as you go up towards the red end or yellowy red end, you get longer wavelength, um, lower frequency and lower energy. Okay, this is NAT5 revision with a wee bit of these new formulas. In. So we're now going to look at a wee bit more in detail about line emission spectra. How do we actually get these lines on here and what do they correspond to? So each line on a line emission spectra corresponds to a frequency, which would be colour or wavelength, of light. So these line emission spectras are only for light um, and the photons produced might not always be light. They might be other EM waves. So we'll talk about that in a second. Each line on a line emission spectra corresponds to a unique photon produced by an energy level transition. It's a sample element with some energy level transitions in it. The larger the energy level transition, the larger the frequency, the smaller the wavelength, that would go closer to the blue end or the violet end of the spectrum. The smaller the energy level transition, the smaller the frequency, the longer the wavelength, closer to the red end of the spectrum. So I've actually tried to colour these for you. Here's a small energy level transition. 
So this would be this one here. It would be red. Here it is a large energy level transition. This one is more bluey violet. Okay. Now that should probably say blue slash violet. I might change that as well. Now these two are black. Now I'm going to explain why they are black. And you'll notice there are six transitions. One, two, three, four, five, six. But only four coloured lines. So these two black ones are not there. I'll explain why in a second. Energy level transitions producing photons of frequency out with the visible spectrum are in the form of other EM radiations. That's what these two black ones are. I'll explain that in a second. Brighter lines on a line emission spectra are caused by more photons. This could be from more electrons making that energy level transition or multiple energy level transitions having the same energy released. So what you can maybe see here is these, is these energy levels are quite far apart. But if, the, if this one here was quite similar to this one here, if this energy level was much higher up, then these two energy level transitions might be very, very similar in colour. So um, in this one here, that's red and blue. But if that was much higher and these were very similar in size, then those colours might be very similar. So the line might be really quite bright. It might be quite a wide band of light. You get that with sodium. It's quite a band of colour you get. And that's because the transitions are quite similar in the energy of the release. So you get a brighter line. So, I'm just going to click through this uh, and show you, explain where the lines come from. So, this one, this transition here corresponds to this one here. It's a smallish energy transition, so it's towards, um, it's a, a bluey light. This one here is quite a small energy level transition, it's thought it's going to be red. This one here is deeper purpley colour, violet colour, so it's this one here. And this one is a lighter violet colour, so this one's here. So, they correspond to these energy level transitions. So these lines all correspond to these um, coloured lines on the line emission spectrum. Let's go on to the black ones. What, what, what are they about? So the first one is a very small, very small transition. It has a small energy, because it's a small energy level transition. It has a low frequency, has a long wavelength. So it is longer than the visible spectrum. So it doesn't appear on the line emission spectrum. It would be up here somewhere beyond the visible spectrum. So it would be infrared. Now it could be longer than infrared. It could be up to, um, say, microwaves, or it could be TV and radio waves, or something way up that end. Um, but we're just going to say it's infrared or longer, somewhere up that way. And the last one is this black one here. No, notice the energy is actually bigger than the biggest energy we've got. Is a large transition. It's the largest energy here. It is a larger transition. Large energy, high frequency, short wavelength, it could be ultraviolet or longer. Um, oh, I've done longer, so that's actually going to be uh, shorter. That should say shorter. I'm going to change that as well. Why are all these mistakes in here? I need to fix that. So I'll go back and fix that as well. That should say shorter in there. Um, it's not going to be visible. It's not in the line emission spectrum. So this one would be down here somewhere beyond the visible spectrum. Now, this takes us on to this last type of spectra called absorption spectra. Now, you might have done this last year. I certainly did it with my NAT5 class last year, I remember doing it. Um, but it's not part of NAT5, it's actually in higher. So it's just to kind of recap what this is. Um, so an absorption spectra is created when continuous white light sources pass through a cool gas. So this diagram up here tries to explain it to you. You've got a light source. Let's say an example we often use is a star. And um, if you were to look at the light from that star, you would get a continuous spectra. This here is how we split a light into its component parts. That's what you did in that five. So the light from here came through, split into its component parts. You get a full continuous spectra. If you shine light, continuous light, through a cloud of cool gas, what happens is um, the electrons in the gas absorb specific photons to move up between energy levels. Uh, the photon absorbed and the upward energy level transition have exactly the same energy. When the electrons in the gas then release that energy, dropping back down energy levels, the emitted photon is not in the same direction as the original photon, and the spectrum observed is a continuous spectrum with black lines called absorption lines. So, the continuous spectra comes from the hot source, this here, comes from the hot source, enters the cool gas, and in the cool gas you've got all these electrons sitting at ground state, and these high energy photons coming from the, the hot source. And they hit these electrons and they give them energy and they absorb up. They, they absorb the energy and they go up the way. 
So instead of the photon being released because of an energy level drop, these are the photons being absorbed in the electrons taken at energy and rising up. So just like electricity and heat can cause electrons to be excited up, light can also be absorbed by the electron and rise it up. We'll do more of that next week when we talk about photoelectric effect. So the photons from this be, get absorbed by the hydrogen gas. But what we also know is that the electrons can only be certain levels. So the photon has to have exactly the right amount of energy to go from ground state to one of the energy levels. Now, those energy levels correspond to the hydrogen line emission spectra. So the photons from the continuous spectra, um, only this photon, this photon, this photon, and this photon correspond to the energy levels. So they're the only photons that get absorbed. So they then get absorbed by the gas. The gas actually glows because it's absorbing all this energy, but then releases that light back out. But when it releases that back light back out, it doesn't go in the same direction. It actually gets go up in random directions. So the light comes in, absorbed by the electrons. The electrons take it, they then drop back down, but release the photons, say, that way or that way. They don't necessarily release it the same direction. So they are missing. They can become missing from the continuous spectra. And they are known as absorption lines. The position of the absorption lines for a particular element is identical to the position of the coloured lines in the element's emission spectrum. Absorption spectra allow the elements inside the atmosphere of stars to be identified. So this could be the star, this could be the star's atmosphere, and we can then look at these lines, the dark lines, compare them to emission spectra for different elements, and we can figure out what elements are in the star. Now our own star, our own sun, has absorption lines, and they are known as the Fraunhofer lines. Just a general term we give these lines to our own star. Uh, and you can see them look a bit like this. You can see you can Google Fraunhofer lines and you'll see a continuous spectrum with lots of black lines on it. And that's corresponding to the elements within our star's atmosphere. And we can work that out from there. Uh, there are questions in the question booklet that I want you to work through that go through the energy level transitions and equals HF and a little bit of absorption uh, spectra as well. And there will also be a homework on uh, spectra and how all this works given out next week as well. I'll try and include some helpful videos as well and see if there's any extra stuff. And as always, please email your teacher, contact us in Teams, join you the drop-in sessions on Thursday or join any class live lessons that we've got as well if you've got any questions. Just get in touch with your classroom teacher. Okay, that's it for this week and enjoy. <laughs>